Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're returning to integration and how you integrate standard functions. Now, integration is the inverse of differentiation. And often the easiest way to integrate a function is to ask yourself what you would have to differentiate in order to get the question. Now, what this means is that it really does help if you are very familiar with standard derivatives when you're carrying out integration. The following are the standard ones you should know already, written in the form of integrals. So the integral of x to the n, you'd add on 1 to the power and divide by the new power. The integral of e to the x is just e to the x. The integral of 1 over x is ln x. The integral of cos is sine. The integral of sine is minus cos. And then these four you more frequently see written the other way around. If you differentiate tan, you get sec squared, which means if you integrate sec squared, you get tan. And similarly, if you integrate cosec cot, you'll get minus cosec. If you integrate cosec squared, you'll get minus cot. And the integral of sec tan is equal to sec x. Now, all of these need to be in your mind or written on a piece of paper in front of you as you go through the questions today. First of all, find the following integral. There are three functions here. There are three different standard integrals from the previous page. But have a go at doing this yourself first. So pause the video and come back to me again when you're ready. OK, let's have a look at this. We'll do it one term at a time. First of all, it does help with the minus 4 root x if you write it as a power, because the standard formula uses a power. So 4 root x is the same as 4x to the half. Integrating 3 sine x will give us minus 3 cos x. Integrating 5 divided by x gives us 5 log x. And integrating this, this is the more fiddly one, the power goes up by 1 to 3 over 2, and we need to divide by the new power, 3 over 2. And that will give us that. And tidying up this, 4 divided by 3 over 2 simplifies to 8 over 3, x to the power of 3 over 2. And always remember to add on the arbitrary constant whenever you do any integration. OK, example 2, find the following integral. Now, it looks very complicated, this. It's using these three standard integrals. Again, have a go at doing this yourself. Pause the video. Uh, come back to me again when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. Now, as well as being, well, needing to be very familiar with these standard integrals, you also have to be very good at using the chain rule to do these sort of integrations. Integrating the first term, well, if you differentiate sec, you get sec tan. So integrating sec tan, we do just get sec. And that is just 10 sec x, no complications there. But with the second term, we've got 5x, not just x. That means when we integrate this, the cosec cot will integrate to give us minus cosec. So we'll have minus cosec 5x. But then you have to imagine differentiating that. And when you differentiate it, you do get cosec 5x cot 5x. But using the chain rule, you'd also have to differentiate the 5x, which means that we would multiply by 5 when we differentiate that. That means when we're doing the integration, we need to remember that. And we have to divide by 5 to cancel out the multiplying by 5 that we would do if we were differentiating using the chain rule. So do take care with that. And something very similar happens with this as well. So when we integrate the cosec, we do get minus cot. So we'll get minus cot 3x minus 1. But if we were to differentiate the cot 3x minus 1, we would times by 3 using the chain rule when we differentiate the 3x minus 1. Because when we differentiate this, we'd need to multiply by 3. It means when you integrate, you need to remember to divide by 3, to cancel out the 3 that you would multiply by if you did differentiate using the chain rule. And that would simplify to 10 sec x minus 1 over 10 cosec 5x plus a third 3x minus 1 plus the arbitrary constant. OK, example 3. Find the following integral. 
Now, none of these are standard integrals. Um, so you need to do a little bit of work before you can actually use the standard integrals. So these will need to be rearranged um, until you have something where you have a sequence of terms, each term you can integrate using a standard integral. I'll let you have a go at doing that yourself first, pause the video, and come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, as I said, a little bit of work needs to be done before we can even carry out the integration. Here, both of these things are being divided by cos squared. So we've got the integral of one over cos squared plus sine over cos squared. And here we've got cos squared, and it is easier, it turns out, if we write the sec as one over cos. Now, these things aren't, they're not always obvious, basically, what you need to do. But in this case, once you write sec as one over cos, you can see that a cosine x on the top and bottom are going to cancel with each other, simplifying this last term. So 1 over cos squared, well, that's sec squared. We can integrate sec squared. That's a standard integral. And then we've got sine over x times by 1 over cos x. That still needs work done on it. And a cos x is cancelled from top and bottom here, leaving us with cos x there. And then this middle term simplifies into sec x, 1 over cos x is sec x, times by tan x, that's the sine x over the cos x. We've swapped them around because the standard integral is written in that form. So sec squared, that's a standard integral. Sec tan, that's a standard integral. Cos, that's a standard integral. Finally, we've reached the point where we can integrate that. Integrating sec squared gives us tan x. Integrating sec tan gives us sec x. And integrating cos x gives us sine x, plus the arbitrary constant. OK, example four um, is an exact integral, where you've got to work out what the value of the integral is after you've done the integration. Now, both of these are standard integrals. But again, walk carefully with the chain rule when you integrate them, and then put in the limits. OK, have a go at this. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. So integrating sec tan gives us sec. So we will have sec 2x. Now, when I differentiate sec 2x, differentiating the sec gives me sec tan. But then using the chain rule, I'll have to differentiate the 2x, which means I'll times by 2, 2 times 3, That'll give me the 6 that I want. Uh, the integral of cosec cot um, is cosec. So when I integrate that, I will get cosec 2x. And same thing as on the first integral. When I differentiate that, I will get cosec 2x cot 2x. But using the chain rule, when I differentiate the 2x, I'll have to times by 2. 2 times 3 will give me the 6. And those are the two limits, pi by 8 and pi by 12. Now I need to substitute those in. That'll give me 3 sec pi by 4 minus 3 cosec pi by 4 minus 3 sec pi by 6 minus 3 cosec pi by 6. You can just throw all of that in the calculator. These are standard trig values. Pi by 4, that's 45 degrees. Um, sec, you need to change into 3 over cosine because your calculator doesn't have sec on it. And same with cosec, you need to change that into 3 over sine, again, because your calculator probably doesn't have cosec on it. Same with both of these. Then you can use your calculator. So the cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. Sine of 45 is 1 over root 2. Cosine of 60 degrees is a half, and the sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. But if you just put all of that in your calculator, that is what you would get. That simplifies to that. The three root 2s cancel with each other, and all you're left with is 6 take away 2 root 3. OK, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, then turn to page 148 and have a go at exercise 7a. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.